A few weeks ago, I had shared a story from the 1950s about Dr. Everett Rogers and his failed effort to get Iowa farmers to adopt a new high yield hybrid cotton resistant to disease. We talked about how this led him to craft his theory of diffusion of innovation. You'll find the link uh, to that story in the comments. Now, the theory of diffusion of innovation divides the population into five parts, innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority and laggards. Now, one of the things that early adopters give the early majority and they in turn give the late majority is social proof. This is what aids the diffusion of innovation. Social proof is a psychological and social phenomena wherein people copy the action of others in choosing how to behave in a given situation. The term was coined by Robert Cialdini in his famous book, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. People often assume that if many others are doing or believing something, it must be correct or appropriate. In fact, it is believed that it is to leverage this behavior that Steve Jobs decided to create white earphones for the iPod. He knew that when people saw other people using the iPod, they would be inclined to buy it themselves. However, the iPod was small enough to put into one's pocket and would never be seen. So, and the dominant mobile music product at that time was the Walkman and the earphones for the Walkman were black. So if the Apple iPod also had black earphones, no one would know that the mobile device being used was an iPod. Having a white earphones indicated to other people that the person was listening to an iPod. As the number of early adopters grew, the number of people visible with white earphones and hence iPods grew. This gave the early majority the social proof they required. Now, Because of social proof, people assume that as I said earlier, many others are doing or believing something, then it must be correct or appropriate, even if it goes against common sense or their own better judgment. While following others might have been a good survival strategy in the past, it doesn't always offer advantages in the modern times. Today's story is about an experiment that proves that social proof is not always to be relied upon. Hi, welcome back to Stories at Work a series where I share real stories from across the world that you can use when you want to drive home a business point. Our website storyworks.in already has over a hundred stories and we are adding one every week. Let's start today's story which I read in the newsletter I have uh, often recommended in the past, Founding Fuel. In the book, The Art of Thinking Clearly, Rolf Dobelli delves into the concept of social proof, which is our tendency to mirror the action and belief of others, often leading to irrational choices and behavior. People frequently believe that if many others are doing something or holding a particular belief, it must be correct or appropriate, even if it defies logic or their own better judgment. While following the crowd might have been beneficial survival mechanism in the past, it doesn't always serve us well in the modern world. Dubele references a classic experiment from the 1950s by the psychologist Solomon Atch to illustrate how peer pressure can skew our common sense. In this experiment, a participant was shown a line and then asked to match it in length with one of the three lines of various length. Now, when alone, the participant easily identifies the correct line because the differences are pretty huge. However, when placed in a group with actors who intentionally choose the wrong line, the participants often confirm to the group's incorrect choice. This experiment shows that about in about one third of the cases, people will go along with the group even when they answer it's obviously wrong to them. Why does that happen? Now, historically, copying others was a good survival strategy. Now, imagine this is 500 years ago and you are with your hunter-gatherer friends in the jungle and suddenly everyone starts running. Would you stand still trying to figure out if the perceived threat is real or would you instinctively run with the group? Those who followed the group survived, while those who didn't likely perished. This deeply ingrained behavior persists even today, despite no longer always being advantageous. 
there are times when social proof can be useful. For example, if you are in a foreign city and unsure where to eat, uh, looking uh, and choosing for a busy restaurant filled with locals can be a good strategy. I use it whenever I'm traveling on the highway. However, it's important to be cautious when companies claim that their product is superior simply because it's popular. Popularity doesn't necessarily indicate quality. Remember the words of English novelist William Somerset Maugham. If 50 million people say something foolish, it's still foolish. What a story. Where in business can you use this story? Here are a few use cases. The first use case is when exploring the power of social influence and making strategic use of social proof. The experiment by Solomon Atch demonstrates the powerful impact of social influence on individual behavior. Just like Steve Jobs used the white earphones, what social proof can you leverage to help people adopt the changes you are driving? For example, let's say you're driving more sustainable behavior by individuals in your organization and you have set a few things that you'd like them to follow or like them to do. What if you change the lanyard color for everyone who signs up and displays the new behavior? The new lanyard color becomes a social proof. When people see a lot of people wearing other people wearing the, the new lanyard, they too would conform to the sustainable behavior you are driving because they want to fall in line. The second use case for the above story is when you are driving the message of critical thinking over conformity, just the opposite. The tendency to follow the crowd can lead to irrational decisions. Just because a lot of people in the organization are doing something doesn't mean it's the right thing or the best thing. Encouraging critical thinking and independent analysis within the team can foster innovation and prevent poor decisions based on groupthink. Let me know if there are other use cases you can think of. I hope you enjoyed that story. And if you did, there are many, many more on our website, storyworks.in. See you next week. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.